and welcome back to another video. I'm Megan Music. I always forget to say that, but that's why this channel is called Manuscripts Music and More because that's my last name. Okay, that was cheesy. Anyway, so today I'm in my home library because we're still out of school. It's still summer, so there's no point in being in my school library because I am a high school librarian. I always forget to introduce myself, so I've got to come up with an intro. This intro is getting way too long each time. Anyway, I bought some books. Let's check them out. So these are in no particular order, but they're all books I've acquired relatively recently, either used or were gifted to me or whatever, so or ones I had to buy for school. So I'm just going to go through them in the order that I have them stacked over here in. And that's like literally the smallest book on top to the largest book on the bottom, so that's how we're gonna do this. Okay, oh, sorry, the first book was used and old, so it smelled good. Okay, so the first book I acquired recently was Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson. It's the first book of Malazan, Book of the Fallen. I've heard people say Malazan, Malazan, Malazan. I like Malazan, that sounds more fantasy and worldly, I don't know. So I'm gonna call it Malazan, Book of the Fallen. This is a, I believe, 10 book series. You might have to correct me on that, but it's a long series. It is epic scope fantasy. Like apparently it's probably as complex as Game of Thrones, which I don't know how it could be, but that's what people tell me. Um, I hear a lot about it on booktube constantly and I would love to start another epic fantasy series. I just started The Blade itself though, which is in the first Law trilogy. So I'll probably try to finish that first, finish the Darker Shades of Magic series first, then I can finally read this. I don't know too much about what it's about, just that it's epic and oh, wow, it has 666 pages. That's kind of weird. Um, and I actually got this book at a used bookstore for $1.65. So, you know, if I don't like it, it's not the end of the world. The next book I got is like the only one I think I actually straight up, no, there's two, I lied, that I straight up purchased like just for me for fun in a bookstore. So I did get this like at an actual bookstore. The Starless Sea uh, by Erin Morgenstern. She's also the author of The Night Circus, which I tried reading and hated and I DNF'd it years ago. So fingers crossed. But they say that the, you know, there's very kind of like purple prose you know, flowery language, that kind of thing. And I've heard that if you like The 10,000 Doors of January that you will like this book or vice versa, but I did not like The 10,000 Doors of January. It was very mediocre. I won't say didn't like it. It was very mediocre to me. So, but I've heard that maybe like books with Brittany, she says that if you, even if you didn't like 10,000 Doors of January, you might still try this one. They're, cause they're both like portal fantasies. And so um, I'm just hoping that this one is a little more whimsical. I mean, the other one was whimsical, I guess, but it just seemed pointless. So I really hope that this one's a lot better. I think there is some kind of sea and yeah, there's portals and a kid discovers like a, is it a book? Yeah, a kid like finds a book in his campus library and realizes that it's telling stories from his own childhood, which also sounds like the 10,000 doors of January. But anyway, maybe it'll be the better book. So I'll give it a try. The next three I bought I'm going to do together and that is I bought all of the Shades of Magic books and I've talked about them in other videos so I'm not going to go through it all here again but V.E. Schwab is a new to me author and I'm starting to think I will definitely read everything she puts out because she's just a really good storyteller. Just the way she can like weave a story is masterful. Like each scene is you know you're just so interested that you're on the edge of your seat wondering what's going to happen next. It kind of reminds me of like I don't know, Breaking Bad or the show The Boys. Like, I feel like it's nothing like those shows, but when I was, when I'm watching those, I'm on the edge of my seat just wanting to know what's going to happen. And that's the same case for this series, except, you know, the, as we know from previous videos, the first one is absolutely amazing and it's basically a standalone and you don't have to even read the other two. Um, Gathering of Shadows <laughs> was a major letdown because nothing really happened at all. And then right now I'm still reading Conjuring of Light, so we'll see how it goes. But um, four different Londons, gray, red, white, black, um, each with a different type of magic or something happening with magic in them. I've talked about it before. Um, high stakes adventures go on and the characters aren't really all that, but the plot is really good. So that's why I've loved the first one so much. So I'm going to keep going, but it's getting kind of rough now. So fingers crossed that the third one is a little bit better. Next one that I straight up bought in a bookstore and the next biggest, as you can see, see we're getting progressively larger. <laughs> we started with Little Gardens of the Moon over there. Is Sinlin Ascends by Josiah Bancroft. And this is the Books of Babel series, the Book of Babel. And it's about this Tower of Babel, which at first I thought like related to like the, you know, like biblical Tower of Babel. But apparently it has nothing to do with that. Anyway, I've not even opened this book and I've honestly not even read the back of it. But I know it's about a character, yeah, named Thomas Sinlin, who... Is going like with his wife to uh, on their honeymoon to this Tower of Babel and he loses his wife there and then he spends the whole series trying to find her and I think the fourth book is coming out this fall so there's three out right now which is good because I could at least read it read all three of them if they're good. Sounds really weird so I'm kind of into that though I really liked like Piranesi by Susanna Clark and for some reason it kind of gives me those vibes just from what I've heard of it 
So it says that like in the tower, there's a world of geniuses and tyrants, luxury and menace, unusual animals and mysterious machines. He has to endure betrayal, assassination attempts, and the illusions of the tower. And as he ascends, I guess things get crazier. So I don't know how it's going to be a series. I also don't, I, I don't know. I just know people love it. So I've not really ever heard a negative review, honestly. So I'm pretty excited. Next is a book I've already talked about in another video, so I won't spend too long on it here, but it is Ray Bear by Jordan Ifuego. So this is a young adult fantasy novel that I have to read for school. So I had to buy my own copy so that I could write in it because I'm leading a book discussion for uh, the summer reading books that the kids had to read. This was one of the choices. So I actually have to annotate it and make up discussion questions. And I, so far, I'm really enjoying it. I'm on page 20, so I'm going to keep reading this one. I've talked about it in another video as well. Um, I honestly don't know too much about it yet, except that it's about um, a girl, you know, young girl, obviously, very African-inspired uh, mythology going on here. Um, also, the world building is amazing. So that's, the, I, I already agree, because in the last in 20 pages, I already know a lot about this world and the way the magic works, and it's really neat. So I highly recommend it for that reason. And at first, I didn't believe people when they said that, because they always say that, but it's actually true this time. But it's about this girl who she is raised by somebody called the lady and she thinks that the lady is her mother Which I think she is but I haven't really found, figured that out yet And she doesn't really quite know who her father is and it this is not a spoiler because it happens in the first 20 pages But she finds out she's only a product of like a wish like her mother ran into this thing That's sort of like a genie and is like hey, I get three wishes. I wish for like a daughter to give me um to, to basically do my bidding and her bidding is she wants to kill the the prince or the king or something like that and to do that she's going to send she's going to train the girl in all ways she possibly could and then she's going to send her off to do this competition so that she can get in the prince or king or whatever get in his i think it's the prince get in his favor and then uh kill him <laughs> so i don't know that she's gonna do that because i'm pretty sure she's gonna fall in love with the prince or that she's supposed to kill because that's what happens in these kind of things and it kind of hints at that in here so it's gonna be i guess about her loyalties and i don't know the the world building like they said is really cool and i know there's already gonna be a sequel called redemptor and i've literally in the first 20 pages they already explained what redemptors are and that that's really cool too so i'm really in already intrigued as to how there could be a sequel i'm super interested in this one and i can't wait to continue it the last book I bought recently is <laughs> The Lady Rogue by Jen Bennett. So I feel like I've heard of this author on booktube before, so maybe she wrote something else. But this is like a Dracula thing, but I think from like a female perspective, if Dracula were a woman or something. No, never mind. That's not this book. That's another book. There's some book where it's like Dracula is a woman, but it's not this one. <laughs> so I, well, I got this because I got it at like an outlet store for $2, I think. Who could not buy this really pretty hardback for $2? Anyway, and it's huge, right? Um, so it says, The Ring of Vlad the Impaler was itself a legend, but the man who wore it was even more so. It wasn't just a random piece of jewelry. The ring was an occult talisman forged for a militant medieval organization known as the Order of the Dragon. That sounds cool. And it was rumored to imbue its wearer with a dark magical power. First, if one believed there was any grain of truth in the stories that surrounded it, and its most notorious owner, Vlad the Impaler, Prince of Romania, better known as Vlad Dracula, son of the dragon. I mean, it keeps talking about Order of the Dragon, Son of the Dragon. Like, is it going to be, are there going to be dragons? <laughs> I mean, I don't think there's going to be dragons, but maybe he turns into a dragon because like Dracula can turn into, a, you know, like a bat and stuff. So, I mean, that would be cool. I'm thinking maybe there's some romance in it, but I'm not sure. So, it's definitely, yeah, Theodora and Huck are going to go on a thrilling adventure through gothic villages and dark castles in the misty Carpathian mountains to recover this notorious ring, but they aren't the only ones searching because the occult society um, wants it. And I think, you know, they're probably gonna try to bring Dracula back or something or whatever. Anyway, so it sounds pretty cool for two bucks. I just couldn't resist. So I do want to show you one last thing. It's not any books I bought, but I did get these and I'll explain kind of the story in a minute, but I got these book sleeves and they're awesome. Um, so basically like as you can see inside there, there's like black and white Harry Potter stuff. This, you know, lets you transport your books without damaging the corners. And there's, um, they're big enough that you can fit even like some of the bigger books in these. So uh, my mother-in-law actually made these for me. <laughs> so I had asked her for, uh, for Christmas last year. She said, what would you want? And I said, well, you know, everybody's using these book sleeves, but she couldn't find any anywhere. I don't know where everybody orders them from. There was just a few on Amazon, but she didn't really like any of them, I guess. So she made me some because she, um, you know, sews and everything. So she made me a Harry Potter one. She made me a travel themed one because she knows I love traveling. She basically picked things I really, really like. And she made me a little underwater like looking one, just the pretty because she knows I like blues and greens. So 
She did really, really good. Each one has like a different pattern inside, I think. Yeah, this one just has red inside. But yeah, I love these. And I sometimes, <laughs> I do take two books with me very frequently. So I'm like, well, you know, I'm going to be gone for five days or something and I might want to read multiple books or change back and forth or whatever. So this way I can have multiple ones that don't get the corners bent. So anyway, book sleeves are cool. Uh, I recommend those too. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, hopefully I'll get to reading these books soon. I am of course reading Ray Bear already and I'm finishing up the Shades of Magic trilogy. So fingers crossed I can get to Malazan um, eventually. It'll probably be like the last one of these. We'll see if I ever read, read The Lady Rogue. It might just sit there, but maybe one day I'll get bored and want to read about Dracula. Who knows? Anyway, talk to you guys later. Bye.